In Jesus' name we pray. And the church of the living God shout. Father, we thank you for this day. It's a day you have made. We'll be glad and rejoice in it in Jesus' name. Yours is the glory. Ours is the blessing. And today I pray you grant us understanding in your word and will experience greater, higher, deeper, broader things in the Lord in Jesus' name. We we'll thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. John chapter 8. I'm reading to you from verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Look at that again. And I will know the truth, and the truth will make me free. You see, there are people who may come to church. They will read the Bible. We may even preach from the Bible. If we do not know the truth, know it in our heart. For example, you know you are a man, you know you are a woman. And when you know the truth to the point that you know that you know, just like you know who you are, and you know that truth in the same way, you experience the truth. You have the possession of the truth. And you can explain the truth related to yourself, the new creature. When you know the truth that way, you'll be free, completely free in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. That word indeed there means a hundred percent free, completely free, totally free, happily free, and permanently free. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. It makes us free from sin. Makes us free from the consequence of sin. He makes us free from all the things that came upon us in the fall of man. The Son of God came to this world to lift us up, to take us up, and to make us free, free from every bondage of life. You are free today. I am free today. Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 1. There is therefore now, at this present time, after you have visited Calvary, after you have tasted of the goodness of God, of the grace of God, and the Lord has imparted unto you the fruit of his finished work at Calvary. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, for the Lord of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You understand that? It says there is a law of the spirit of life and it's in Christ Jesus and it says that has made me free from the law of sin and death. Let me explain it this way. There is the law of gravity that pulls everyone down. There is the law of gravity that pulls every object down. Throw up any object and then it comes down. And it doesn't matter anywhere you are in the world that you throw up an object, it must come down. Why? Because of the law of gravity. But now, there's another law that is applicable to the aeroplane. And it goes up and it doesn't come down. If it doesn't want to come down, the jet that is thrown up 
and it goes up and it overcomes the law of gravity there is a spiritual law there is a law of the spirit of life in Christ there's a supernatural law and it was given at Calvary and now the law of sin and death that normally pulls everybody down make resolution the law of sin and death will pull you down and try to determine the law of sin and death will pull you down and try to make a, you know, a commitment I will not, I will not, I will not in your own strength the flesh doesn't have that power anything you throw up it will come down the law of sin and death will bring it down but now the spirit enters into you the spirit of Christ the spirit of resurrection the spirit of life in the spirit of Christ comes into you and abides in you and you come up like an aeroplane and then you overcome the law of gravity you come up you will not go down I go up I will not go down you know what you have tried to do by yourself before and you couldn't because there's a law operating in your life the law of sin and death but now because you are born again now because you are a child of God the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death in verse 3 but what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh look at verse 4 that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit somebody there say amen, amen. that's the freedom we're considering today we're looking at the message the purposeful freedom of true believers in Christ the purposeful freedom of true believers in Christ divided to three points number one our privilege as transformed sons of God our privilege your privilege my privilege our privilege all of us as transformed sons of God number two our purity as true saints of God our purity he purges us he cleanses us he purifies us he sanctifies us he makes us holy he sets us free he breaks every yoke and he weakens the power of the devil and the power of sin in our lives our purity as true saints of God point number three the purpose of the triumphant son of God the purpose of the triumphant son of God number one our privilege as transformed sons of God we're coming back to first John chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us behold what does that mean it says don't think about any other thing don't focus attention on any other thing don't even remember the things of the past before that conversion took place behold look at it gaze upon it think about it appropriate it for yourself embrace it behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God 
Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is. And even today, we need to see him as he is. There are many people, they're looking at Christ as they saw him in the past at Capernaum, at Galilee. As they saw him tired and weary by the well, they do not see him after the cross, after resurrection, after ascension, after sitting on the right hand of majesty on high. You know, anytime you come before the Lord and anytime you pray, what you get depends on how you see the Lord. If you see him as the author and the finisher of your face, you are going to get something. If you see him as the glorified Christ, you are going to get something. And if you see him as the provider of all your needs, spiritual, emotional, psychological, and physical, and professional, you will get what you are desiring if you see him arrive. Today I see him. I said today I see him. You know, if you don't see him on earth, you'll not see him in heaven. If you don't see him now, you will not see him in the future. But now he says, we're sons of God transformed sons of God, changed sons of God. Look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave ye power to become the sons of God, to become to become where we're not like that before. We were sons of Satan, children of the devil, and the children of wrath as all others. But now we turn away from sin and we turn to the Savior and we receive him. And we believe him that now he is a savior, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. If it has not happened to you, it will happen. How does that happen? Second Corinthians, behold, now are we the sons of God. Second Corinthians chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them. You've been a drunkard, come out from among the drunkards. You've been a worldly man, a worldly woman, come out from among them. You've been a gambler, gambling with money, gambling with drugs, gambling with your soul, Gambling with your life, come out from among them. You're being a worker in the night, doing a night work. I don't mean the regular work, 
I mean the work people do and they have to wait for darkness before they can do it. Come out from among them. You've been an occultic man, a man in the gang. You want to become a child of God because you cannot get anything from the devil without paying for it eternally. Anything you get from the devil, you're going to pay for it forever and ever and you're going to be with the devil for all eternity but there's nothing you get from the devil that you cannot get multiplied fold from Christ and it will be foolish to remain with the devil because what he gives you now is just to tie you with him for all eternity but now you want all your blessing all your riches all your provision to come from Christ wherefore come out for among them and be separate says the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and I will receive you he never rejects anyone that comes and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and my daughters says the Lord Almighty somebody say amen over there amen. and as you become a child of God the Spirit of God bears witness in your heart you're now a child of God Romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 8 we're reading from verse 14 Romans chapter 8 reading from verse 14 here he tells us in verse 14 it says for as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God you give your life to Christ and he comes to live inside you. And from that time on, he guides you. He leads you. And he will never lead you into darkness. He's the light of the world. He will never lead you into righteousness. He is our righteousness. He will never lead you into sin. He's a savior from sin. Any way he guides you, for any reason he has to guide you, he guides you into the light. He guides you into more of his grace. He guides you into a life of righteousness and victory. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear spirit of bondage is cancelled in your life the spirit of fear is cancelled from your life the spirit of timidity you want to do something you cannot try up and do it spirit of discouragement cancelled in your life in jesus name for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and each children and then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together somebody say amen, amen. some people don't understand why God can permit any persecution in our lives any suffering in our lives any kind of affliction in our lives if it is for Christ it will bring great glory into your life I said it will bring glory into your life 
that if we suffer we see him we shall be glorified also with him we're sons of God I said we are sons of God Philippians chapter 2 in Philippians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 14 Philippians chapter 2 reading from verse 14 the privilege of transformed sons of God the position of transformed sons of God the picture of transformed sons of God what do they look like sons of God how do they act sons of God how do they behave sons of God how do they comport and carry themselves sons of God Philippians chapter 2 reading from verse 14 do all things without murmurings and disputings those are sons of God that ye may be blameless and harmless sons of God that ye may be blameless and harmless sons of God without rebuke can you think of a person that lives a life that even if you're looking for something to rebuke there's nothing to rebuke they do what they do honestly they do it righteously they do it faithfully they do it graciously and they do it in a godly manner and if you were looking for something to rebuke is such a son of God is such a daughter of God is such a child of God there is nothing in to rebuke your life will be rebukable my life will be rebukable my ministry will be rebukable I can't hear you now look at verse 15 again that she may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain neither labored in vain I will rejoice over you when we get to the other side God will rejoice over you when you get to the other side Christ will rejoice over you when you get to the other side. Transformed, harmless, blameless, unrebukable sons of God. We're looking at Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ will live in you. Can you find, can you think about somebody is going along the street and he's smoking, bringing out smoke, a walking chimney, trying hell before he gets there and then you run after him you say I want to talk to you about Christ oh he says don't worry already know Christ true yes everything I do is not me but Christ liveth in me you say how about this one in your mouth he says it's not me it says it's Christ that lives in me that is doing that do you accept that I said do you accept that you find somebody two of them they're fighting and they're using abusive language and they're violent and then you approach them and say let there be peace now why are you fighting what's the problem and you try to separate them and then you, you after separating them you want to preach Christ to them 
And then you see, I want to talk to you about Christ before I go. Oh, he says, you know, one of them said, but I know Christ already. Everything I do, Christ liveth in me. Does Christ fight? What are you? I said, does Christ fight? No. When Christ lives in us, it's a prince of peace. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, I pray that all these privileges of being the sons of God, the Lord, will affirm in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Point number two, the purity as true saints of God. Our purity as true saints of God. We're coming back to First John. We're reading from chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 3. And every man that has this hope, what kind of hope? Already in verse 2 it said, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him, risen ascended to heaven glorified and our body totally transformed that we wear a glorified body heavenly body that's the hope everyone that has that hope of getting to heaven and being with Christ and seeing those angels and walking on the streets of gold everyone that has this hope of getting to heaven purify himself even as he is pure he has said in verse 2 he has said we shall see him as he is you see you have believed in Christ over here now on earth and you have not seen him and he says the people that have the hope that they don't just want to come to church and be a religious man a religious woman they're coming because they want to see him on the final day he says all those people every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure our purity as true saints of god look at verse 5 and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin is telling us that for us to be purified and for us to remain pure that we have to get to christ he has been manifested and is to take away our sin look at verse 6 whosoever abideth in him sinneth not that's a purity we abide in him we don't abide in the flesh we don't abide in sin we don't abide in corruption we don't abide in disobedience we don't abide in rebellion we don't abide in evil whosoever abideth in him sinneth not look at verse 7 little children let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous look at verse 9 whosoever is born of God does not commit sin that's me I said that's me it's not just word of mouth that is me you know you've come to Christ and he has the power Christ Jesus has the power 
the power to cleanse you from sin and the power to turn your life around and make you who you ought to be pure and holy and sanctified and because of that power it makes you not to live a life free from sinning whosoever is born of god does not commit sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of god again that's me i'm born of god i said i'm born of god and therefore i sin not you will not sin but stand in this the children of god are manifest and the children of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of god neither he that loveth not his brother i love my brothers I love my sisters and I will not do anything that will injure them. Say that. Anything that will injure my brothers and sisters spiritually. Anything that will injure my brothers and sisters emotionally. Anything that will injure my brothers and sisters physically. Anything that will injure my brothers and sisters in their family. I will not do anything like that. You will not. I said you will not. The grace to remain righteous, it will give to everyone. The love to remain righteous and pure, it will give to everyone. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I will look in at verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. We're reading from verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, this is how you keep yourself pure, do it for yourself. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God perfecting holiness in the fear of God what does that say when somebody does not even make an effort to be holy and remain holy he does not have the fear of God when somebody deliberately plunges himself to any sin that is unholy, unrighteous, ungodly. He does not have the fear of God. He doesn't have the love of God. He doesn't have the grace of God. He doesn't have the fear of God. And such people are not on their way to heaven. If we're on our way to heaven, you follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6, we're reading from verse 6. Romans chapter 6, we're reading from verse 6. In verse 6, knowing this. We know this by experience. Knowing this, we know this by personal possession. Knowing this, we know this by the present victory that we have. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. The old man, the old nature, the old creature, the old habit is crucified with him. Let me explain. You know, when you hear of a lion, you are afraid of the lion. 
you run away and keep at the greatest distance from the lion. Why? Because the lion has the nature of devouring and destroying and slaying and killing and tearing in pieces. But when the lions are there, and the power of God comes in the midst of the lions, the nature to devour, the nature to destroy, all that vanishes away. That's why when Daniel, who carried the power of God, supernatural power of God, when he entered, or when he was thrown into the lion's den, and God sent an angel to come to that lion's den with Daniel. Those lions temporarily at that time lost their nature. They couldn't devour because Daniel and the angel were there. The same thing when Christ enters into our lives. And Christ is greater than Daniel. And Christ is greater than any angel. When Christ enters into our lives, the nature of violence is subdued. I cannot hear your amen. You know, somebody at home, the man is always angry. Even when the wife has not done anything. And the man wakes up in the morning to subdue the woman. Before the woman even has any chance to do anything right or wrong. He gets angry. And uh, at an, any little movement, it's a wife beater. And he continues to beat the wife. But now, when Christ enters... That old nature will vanish away. You used to beat your wife, you beat them no more. I cannot hear your amen. It will be unfortunate to read in the newspapers, like all these things we read in newspapers. When he wanted to beat me to death, that's when I ran away. Your husband will be converted. And sometimes say the wife that gets angry and whatever instrument he has in hand and whatever he can do to intimidate the husband. You are the head of the home, okay, be the head. And he wants to wreck and ruin that man, subdue that man, so that the man will not have a voice and so she is violent like the lion. When Christ comes in, the violence of the lion is taken away. Amen. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin may be destroyed, that henceforth we shall not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Look at verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Sin will not reign in your body. Sin will not reign in your action. Sin will not reign in your tongue. Sin will not reign in your activities. And sin will not reign in your house fellowship. Argument, argument, argument in the house fellowship. It will come to an end in Jesus' name. Sin will not reign in the local church in Jesus' name. 
look at verse 12 let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the laws thereof verse 13 neither yield ye your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of tell me instruments of tell me tell me instruments of righteousness unto God I'll be an instrument of righteousness you will be an instrument of righteousness we're looking at second Timothy chapter 2 second Timothy chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 21 second Timothy chapter 2 verse 21 if a man therefore purge himself from these everyone in a deep and live Bible church location. She understand, I need to purge myself. I need to purify myself. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. You'll be a vessel unto honor. I'm a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work flee also youthful laws but follow righteousness faith charity peace with them that call on the lord out of what kind of heart a pure heart. We come to point number three now. The purpose of the triumphant Son of God. The purpose of the triumphant Son of God. We're coming to chapter three of First John. First John chapter three, the second part of verse eight. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. True? Real? Possible? In your life? In your family? Every work of the devil will be destroyed. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Any sin that is the work of the devil, you will not accept, you will not hide, you will not hold, you will not tolerate in your life, in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, in your family somebody's bringing in something and then you say what's that and then you pick it up you look at it front and back this is not of god anything not of god is of anything not of god is of of the devil and that thing that comes into your home and you say this is not of God this of the devil it will be destroyed from your family on your wife every walk of the devil destroyed that wife is supposed to love you and to take care of you until a long time you know, we say until death do us part. But you can tell that death, I love this, my wife. You cannot come in and take my wife now. Go. Your wife will abide and death will go away in Jesus' name. And anywhere you go and every time you move about, you move in the consciousness that every work of the devil will be managed, tolerated, kept in a corner, 
loved, excused. What's to be done to the work of the devil? I said, what's to be done to the work of the devil? From the top of your head to the tip of your toe. Every work of the devil is destroyed in Jesus' name. Look at how Jesus did it. I'm reading to you from Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about, who went about, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Sickness is the work of the devil. Disease is the work of the devil. Demonization is the work of the devil. Every work of the devil, disease or demons, they're canceled from your life in Jesus' name. That's why he came. He came to destroy the works of the devil. They are gone. I said they are gone. And if you left anyone back at home today because you couldn't even bring them because of the work of the devil, before you got back home, she is well in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance unto the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind to search at liberty them that are bruised that's what he came to do he came to destroy all the works of the devil to preach the acceptable year of the lord and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him and he began to say unto them and he's beginning to say unto us this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears this day is this scripture fulfilled in your life this day is this scripture fulfilled on your wife, on your husband. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your children. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your grandchildren. The works of the devil are destroyed in Jesus' name. Verse 32, and they were astonished at his doctrine. They were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. His word was with power. Verse 36, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying what a word is this for with authority and with power he commanded unclean spirits and they come out and they come out Colossians chapter 2 in Colossians chapter 2, remember for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Colossians chapter 2, 
reading from verse 15. Galatians chapter 2, verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers in your life, having spoiled principalities and powers in your family, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He made a show of them openly. He will disgrace the devil openly in your family. Openly, he will disgrace all the enemies of your progress in Jesus' name. Even people will testify about you. They say, look at that man. If you have any evil intention, don't go near him. Otherwise, something always happens that those who want to oppress him, destroy him, they always disgraced openly. Even unbelievers have been warning fellow unbelievers concerning you. That man, that woman, if you don't want open disgrace, open shame, don't go near him to do evil because he carries the power of God. In your life, I will record a testimony. I said in your ministry, I will record a testimony. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in each. He came to destroy the works of the devil and every work of the devil around you, anywhere near you, the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn them up. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that he through death might destroy him that has the power of death, even the devil. He has now destroyed him that has the power of death, even the devil. That's why I can assure you that you will not die prematurely. Yeah. All your days on earth will be accomplished victoriously in Jesus' name. Yeah. Sin is conquered and all the consequences of sin are removed away from your life. Do you know that the curse that is troubling people in the world cannot touch you anymore? Because for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. We're looking at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 13. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Somebody there is a possessor today, a receiver today. You'll be full. I said you'll be full. It's going to make you full in Jesus' name. Remember the purpose why he came? He came that he might destroy the works of the devil. We're looking at Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, verse 11. And behold, 
there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Infirmity. There's a spirit behind that. Deformity. There's a spirit behind that. Disease and sickness. There's a spirit behind that. Impotence. There's a spirit behind that. Which had a spirit of infirmity. 18 years. I was bowed together. And could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. The women did not say amen. amen. Let the brothers say amen too. Amen. You are loosed from thine infirmity. Verse 13, and he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Verse 16, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, bondage is a work of the devil. And Jesus said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from uh, this bond on the Sabbath day, every bondage will be taken away. And all spirit of infirmity will be conquered from your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 27. The curse is a work of the devil. Disease, a work of the devil. Sin, a a work of the devil. Powerlessness, a work of the devil. Fear, a work of the devil. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Occultic power is the work of the devil. Anything occultic anybody threw on you, any charm, a work of the devil, destroy today from your life in Jesus' name. I say chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 27. I say chapter 10, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day. And it comes to pass on this day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder yeah. and his yoke from off thy neck yeah. and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Any yoke the devil has put in your neck and he's using that yoke to make you plow his field, to make you cultivate his farm. That yoke will be removed from your neck today. <laughs> Any body on your shoulder. Have you ever noticed there are some people, they're walking about, it's like there's a load on their shoulder and it's pressing them down. And anytime they're moving on and moving on, and when they're about to get to that thing they have been praying for, and the thing they've been desiring, and the thing they believe the Lord is going to give unto me, as they're willing to catch it like this, almost catching it, then the yoke is drawn back and they lose it again. Your yoke is broken today in Jesus' name. <laughs> Wanting to get married. I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, and now you got it. I say, now I got this one. And it's so bright, it's shining, and I know that this one is mine. But you know, before you prayed like that, you got somebody, 
and eventually you lost and then you go to even a courtship and eventually the courtship was broken and now again there is another one they put in a yoke on your neck and they're always drawing you back when you are about to get that thing is the work of the devil i said it's the work of the devil and that yoke is broken today and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There's anointing present here today, and every yoke in your life will be canceled and destroyed in Jesus' name. <laughs> and now you understand, you know, this congregation, our congregation, many years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, we were a young congregation. And the pastor was a young pastor, though we didn't realize it at that time. And now as we are, you know, getting older, the congregation deeper life is becoming an older congregation. We have some people now, they're in their 70s, in their 80s, and some people in their 60s, and some people in their 50s. You know what we discovered? The sicknesses we didn't recognize, we didn't even know about, we didn't even know their names 30 years ago, we're beginning to hear of them and it says because we're getting older we're getting older is the work of the devil is that the gift of Jesus I said is that the gift of Jesus that thing will go away look at Exodus chapter 23 Exodus chapter 23 and I'm reading here from verse 22. I'm reading from verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies. The Lord is releasing us from fighting any enemy. He will fight the enemies on your behalf himself in Jesus' name. <laughs> and that's the difference between us who recognize that the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil between us and other people outside who are forever, forever, forever fighting enemies. Don't fight any enemy anymore. The Lord will fight your battle for you. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. Mine angel, notice their capital A, mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and to the Hittites and to the Perizzites and to the Canaanites and to the Hivites and to the Jebusites and I will cut them off. Yeah. Thou shalt not bow down unto their gods nor serve them no do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them. Utterly overthrow them. We don't accept any activity of the devil. We don't accept or tolerate any uprising of the devil and say, is the last days that's how the world is satan wants to have a seat in the church demons want to have a seat in the church and opposers of sound doctrine want to have a seat in the church is the last days let them alone no we're going to overthrow every one of them in your little corner house fellowship in your little community local church 
And in your church, district church, or in the group, you don't say it's the last days and this is what will be happening in the last days is happening in the world and the world is coming into the church and then throw up your hands in helplessness. There's nothing we can do. We will utterly overthrow them all. Yeah. You will overthrow them. Yeah. I said you'll overthrow them. Yeah. And quite break down their images. Verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. He shall bless thy bread and thy water. Do you remember Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were in Babylon. And they were going to give them the dainties of the king to eat. But those things have been sacrificed to idols. They said, no, we will not have that. Give us vegetable and water. That's enough. And he gave them just that. When they examined them, 10 days after, they were healthier than all those who were eating the dainties of Babylon. And when he blesses our bread and our water, look up here so I can talk to you. I said when he blesses our bread and our water, you'll be healthier than all the people that are depending on drugs and hospitals in Jesus' name. And I will take sickness away from the midst of them. Verse 26, and there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The last line there is so beautiful, I want to hear your voice. The last line there. Say it confidently. You will not die before you finish your work. You will not die before you finish your assignment. Every work of the devil in your life destroyed in Jesus' name. And the number of my days he will fulfill. The number of my days he will fulfill. The number of my days he will fulfill. It's starting now. I said it's starting now. I said it is starting now. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now. Somebody shout now. Somebody say now. now. Raise your voice now. now. Now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. I'm going to get to heaven. I will get to heaven. I will see Jesus. I will see the Almighty God. I will see the Holy Ghost. I will see all the angels. I will see the patriarchs of old. I will see the prophets of old. I will see the Lord. We shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. I cannot sin. I will not sin. I must not sin. He cannot sin because he is born of God. For this purpose, 
the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. You are the one that the Lord is going to bless today. Amen. You are going to have that purpose of freedom fulfilled in your life. Amen. Where are you? Rise up and tell the Lord, today is a special day. It's a glorious day, powerful day. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. The Lord is doing something in your life today. Something you never dreamed of. Something you never imagined. Transformed sons of God. The cross has the power to transform your life, change your life, turn your life around. Be a spectacle of miracle. And let that spectacular scene happen in your life. Miracle of transformation. Remember days of old? Days of your early conversion? When life turned around? When life changed? And even people around you, they could point at you as a changed man, as a changed woman. Recall that day, recollect that day, rediscover that day. Transformation. Free and free indeed. Free. Free from all the sins of society. Free. Free from all the disgraceful activities of society. Free. Free from all the corruption in society. Free. Free from all the oppression. Free from premature days. The spirit in the world for a minor negligible sin, they go to kill themselves. Free from the spirit of premature days. A little sin, they divorce their wives, divorce their husbands. Free from the spirit of divorce, rampaging families in the world. Free. Rejoice in that freedom. Embrace that freedom. Total freedom. For your spirit, for your soul, for your body, freedom. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Darkness. That's the work of the devil. Disease. That's the work of the devil. Depression. That's the work of the devil. Demonization. 
That's the work of the devil. Departure from the face. Giving heed to doctrines of the devil. Not of the devil. Premature death. That's the work of the devil. For this purpose. For this reason. The Son of God. Our Savior. Our Lord. Our healer. Our deliverer. Our sanctifier. Was manifested. That he might destroy. The works of the devil. Let him do it. And he'll make you strong. Make you unconquerable. Make you free. And free indeed. He cannot fail. He has never failed. He did it, finalized it on the cross of Calvary. And he said, it is finished. Let him have the upper hand in your life. Satan will not have the upper hand. The flesh will not have the upper hand. Demons will not have the upper hand. The world, with all its evil power of darkness, will not have the upper hand. Let him be the Lord of your life, the victor in your life, the captain of your salvation. The beginning and the end of everything. Alpha and Omega. He has never lost any battle. He makes us. He makes you more than a conqueror. Receive the victory. Don't gamble with it again. Receive total freedom. Don't play with it. Receive the power to be more than a conqueror in every area of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Transformed sons of God, in Jesus' name we pray. Overcoming saints of God, in Jesus' name we pray. Conquering, conquering, overcoming, triumphant, never to be defeated again. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for your revelation. We thank you for the truth. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the power of the Son of God in our lives. You have come to this world to set us free. And Lord, we proclaim liberty freedom 
dominion, <laughs> healing, <laughs> health for every child of God in Jesus' name. <laughs> Where we succumbed before, we will not succumb anymore. <laughs> Where we failed before, we're not going to fail anymore. <laughs> Where we were defeated before, we will not be defeated again. <laughs> new strength, new power, new authority, new anointing, new possibilities in every life in Jesus' name. We're more than conquerors. Sin will not have dominion over us. <laughs> Satan will not have dominion over us. <laughs> Self will not have dominion over us. <laughs> Sickness will not have dominion over us. <laughs> and any attack, spiritual attack coming from any direction will not have dominion over us. In Jesus' name, free, free, free in the church, free in the home, free in the night, free in the vehicle, free. In every territory, every community, no matter what is happening in that community, when we walk through that community, every power of darkness will clear out of the way. <laughs> Lord, I pray that every yoke that followed anyone here today, that yoke is broken in Jesus' name. Any curse coming from any direction upon anyone here, Lord, that curse is removed. <laughs> a new life, a new vitality, a new strength, a new power, a new authority. Grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy every work of the devil for every brother and every sister, for every boy and every girl. Even those who are listening as we're streaming, every work of the devil is destroyed in your life. <laughs> all our members, all our ministers, all our workers, all our full-time workers, all our families, all daddies and mommies, all children, sons and daughters, Go in this freedom. Go in this power. Where there was sadness, let there be joy. Let there be happiness. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. All the bad news you heard and made you cry, bad news vanish away good news in your life, good news in your family, good news in your surrounding. Every lack of your life is supplied. This day, the Lord make you first. Be the head and not the tail. Let the goodness of the Lord follow you. Henceforth, from now on, forever, in Jesus' name. 
as you have believed, so it is done in your life. Confirm each and every life, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray.